And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your family, your tribesmen, the kindred, those around you, warn them. Now that meant that now we can no longer be silent. We now got to warn the people. So what did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? I'm going to make mention of the story which is very moving and very touching. And it should serve as a lesson to all of us. He gathered the people of the tribes that were considered his own ashira, his own people. He called them tribe by tribe. From the Mount of Safa where he had climbed up. It was quite a high mount. He climbed up and he began to call the names of these little tribes. And he called the names of certain people as well. So everyone was shocked because there was rumor around and there was persecution, obviously, individually. But on a wholesale level, no one dared had the guts to do what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had just done. And this is why they were shocked. This man has just called out. What is it? Is he wanting to give up everything? Well, if that happens, then it will be good for us. But they were in for something else. As they went, some of the leaders couldn't make it, so they sent representatives. One of the people who came there, Abu Lahab, who was one of the uncles of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was actually an uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he arrived there, and they all looking and listening and waiting. What is this man about to say? So he makes an announcement and he's standing at the top and they're all listening to him. He says, if I were to tell you that at the back of this mountain, there is an army of horsemen coming to attack you, to destroy you. Would you believe what I have just said? And all of them said, yes, indeed. We have never heard you lie. Imagine, we have never heard you lie. Subhanallah. We would believe you immediately. He says, فَإِنِّي نَذِيرُ لَكُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ عَذَابٍ شَدِيدٍ So I am warning you of a severe punishment that is about to come. Subhanallah. I am warning you of a punishment that is about to come. And then he began to tell them to do good deeds because he will not be able to save them from that fire or from that punishment just because he is a tribesman or he is a family man or he is a relative. He won't be able to save them. So he came out saying the names of the clans. He says, save yourselves from the fire. Saying the names of certain people, save yourself from the fire for I will not be able to help you. And he delivered the message openly. So that was the reason why he had gathered them around that Mount Safa and how he started the message just to prove to them that you consider me truthful. If I were to lie, I would not have lied about this particular thing. And you know that I'm not a liar, but still Abu Lahab with his big mouth and arrogance because of his standing in Quraysh and he was the son of a top leader of Quraysh. And this was his nephew, but he had no respect for his nephew. Because this would mean he's acknowledging a man above him. You see, this was the problem with the people. They did not want to accept because they would be acknowledging someone above them. They thought we're going to lose our power. We're going to lose this throne that we're sitting on. The wealth that we're sitting on, this man is going to take over everything. And if we acknowledge and we accept what will happen to us, so they refused. Abu Lahab says, Tabbalaka, Ya Muhammad, destruction be upon you, O Muhammad. Ali Hada Jamaatana. Is this why you gathered us here? And the people were looking at him because he had the guts. That was a swear word, basically, meaning insulting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The others were quiet. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam with one of the most powerful, most eloquent surahs that had been revealed up to that time. And so easy to memorize 
that even the children of Quraysh memorized these verses and on the streets everyone was uttering them, Muslim and non-Muslim. Subhanallah, what were the verses? This man, Abu Lahab, he said, Tabban laka, ya Muhammad, destruction be upon you, O Muhammad. So Allah says, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tabba. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَالُهُ وَمَا كَسَبُ سَيَصْلَى نَارًا ذَاتَ لَهَبُ وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبُ فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّن مَّسَدُ Allah says, destruction be to both your hands, O Abu Lahab, a total destruction. His wealth will not help him in any way, nothing. His wealth did not assist him or help him, neither in his life nor in his death, because that is the Quranic injunction. And nothing that he earned will help him, Abu Lahab. And he will indeed go into hellfire. Abu Lahab and his wife, who is the carrier of the fuel, Al Hatab means the firewood. Why was she termed carrier of the firewood? The one who kindled the fire in which they would both burn. Because she had a very bad habit. Lesson for us to learn. She used to go around the women of Quraysh, gossiping, talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adding spices and lying. Lying to them about what he used to say. And she had a habit of going around telling this one, that one. Today, Vodacom has made it easy for us. Allah protect us. They tell you night shift from 12 to 5. One wonders who calls at the time. But dial, numbers engaged. What's happening? We don't want to be Hammalat al Hatab. Wallahi. We don't want to be carriers of that fuel. Talk about this one, talk about that one. No. If you don't need it, let that night shift pass. The month expire. They tell you you no longer deserve that. And you haven't even used it once. But you saved yourself from the fire of Jahannam. Why do we need to call just because it's free? These free minutes and this free method of communication, use it for the benefit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning for the benefit of us when it comes to our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and don't use it for our destruction. So, Ummu Jamil, that was her name. Allah describes her, Allah says, You know, fi jidiha. A jid is this neck, tender, soft, a beautiful neck known as jid. And then Allah says, On that neck, there is hablum min masad. There is more or less a necklace of thorns, so to speak. Subhanallah. Imagine a necklace of a rope full of thorns on that neck by which she shall be pulled. Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us. Look at the description. So as lofty as she seems she is, and as well dressed as she may be, and as one of the wives of one of the leaders of Quraysh as she may think she is, Allah says, watch out. You will be dragged into the fire and it is going to happen. Now, one of the secrets of the Quran is when the Quran has cursed someone by name, there is no hope of them accepting Islam ever. It's over. So she was so angry. She actually went a few days later or the next day and she picked up a stone and wanted to throw it upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was sitting near the Kaaba with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. But Allah made her blind. So she looks at Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is right next to him. And she says, Abu Bakr, where is that friend of yours? If I see him, I will throw this rock on him and so on. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Ya Abu Bakr, Allah has made her blind from seeing me so she can't see me. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us.